Welcome to the New Judgment Podcast. My name is Isaac Kamins. This is a bi-weekly podcast where my friend Jess O'Brien and I discuss internal martial arts, qigong, and meditation. Uh, this week we continue our discussion on the Tai Chi classics. Uh, we talk about the connection between uh, the classics and Wu Yu Shang, the student of Yang, Yang Lu Chan. Uh, then we can talk a little bit about... Um, Baiwa's translation of the Tai Chi classics, and he gets into the connection between heaven, man, and earth, uh, which conveniently dovetails into our discussion on the Patreon about the Guiyan Ne Gong portion of the book. Uh, so that's kind of a nice coincidence. Um, and also, check out our Patreon. We got some interviews there. We got our interview with Bruce, uh, interview with other tr- practitioners and friends of ours. Hope you enjoy the episode, and thanks for listening, and take care of yourselves. Welcome to the Nei Jachuan Podcast with Isaac and Jess. Today we're going to continue our look at Taiji Chuan, and uh, we've been looking at some of the biographies of Yang Lu Chan, the founder, and I was going to pull some stuff here from Barbara Davis's book of 2004, the Taiji Chuan Classics, and she has a a biography of the young family here that uh it's less about the flashy stories and more she's got a more historical approach but so it's it's mostly the same as what we've heard before she says according to most sources young luchan lived for about 30 years in the chen village during this time he became intrigued with the chen family boxing and managed to win the confidence of chen changshing who ultimately accepted him as the first outsider to study boxing with the chen family when Yang was released from his position after Chen's death, he was about 40 years old. So he returned home at that point and went back to work at the pharmacy. Um, so what she brings out here is interesting. She says, the building in which the pharmacy was located was owned by the Wu family. Uh, then they're a local gentry who's a, a wealthier family. Yang began to teach martial arts there, calling his style soft boxing or cotton boxing. It was there that he taught Wu Yuxiang, the youngest son of the Wu family. So later on, Wu be- Wu becomes one of his top students and creates the Wu slash Hao style of Tai Chi, which is a little known variant that um, you don't see a whole lot. But uh, I, Wu comes from a rich family who knows li- literature and writing. Um, so he ends up affecting, he's the source of this first book of the Tai Chi classics, the Tai Chi Chen Jing, um, later on down the road. So I thought that was interesting that Yang worked at his family's building and that's how he made the link makes sense but that's it uh just to clarify this is not the wu of wu Jie, of wu style tai chi this right. is the what's commonly referred to as the how or the wu how style of tai chi which is not connected to wu right. Jin chuan which of right is super <laughs> clear and not confusing at <laughs> right. all so there's this whole, uh, there's the famous Wu style that's all across the world. Then there's this little side style called the Wu slash Hao style or Hao style that's actually very influential on the creation of Tai Chi and the lit- especially the literary side of Tai Chi. So anyways, going on, uh, Barbara has a little bit more about Yang Luchan. It says, legend has it, it was through the Wu family that Yang Luchan received introductions to people in Beijing. So his connection to this literary and sort of upper-class gentry family, is how he got to Beijing in the first place. It says Yang relocated there and began to teach the martial arts more widely, determined to make them public. It is said that among his early students in Beijing were members of the Manchu Imperial Guards. So that's her version of him working for the palace. She downplays it quite a bit, though, and says that there's that some people say that he taught members of the Manchu Imperial Guards, whether they were... You know, right. that was an official capacity, or maybe they just left the building to come learn from him as a side project. Hard to say, but hard to say. It's not I mean, a bit of a legend, though. It sounds more um plausible than some of the other right. ones. I mean, it's it's you know more of a his factual historical right. account. I mean, I prefer the opulent palace with the silks and the uh, incense burners, you know, like it, this is a little more prosaic, unfortunately. You know, you always have to take on the into account, you know, who's, um, who's giving you the story, right? Right. Is it, is it someone who's like 
um, trying to make the Yang family look good? Is it right, someone who's trying family. to make the Chen family look good or doesn't have an interest in your know, vested interest in either of those things? And is just trying to give you a straight sort of history of the thing. Mm -hmm. She's uh, kind of trying to compile everything that everyone said to, into one right. pretty so, straight account. Yeah, and, and that's kind of the you know the um, historian way right. of doing it is you want to give everybody's version a little mm -hmm. bit of credit so nobody can say that it's it's all wrong. They right. can say, well, this part's <laughs> wrong, but I, you know, and so yeah, right. Each cover, group has their best cover, <clears throat> sort of covering your bases, right? Yeah. So she carries on. Yang soon began the process of adapting Taiji Chuan to a broader audience that that his sons and grandsons later continued. Training was modified, moves that were overly strenuous for non-athletic students were eliminated, and a new emphasis on Taiji Chuan's health benefits emerged. These changes in Tai Chi dovetailed with the then current interest in national self-strengthening, a movement that sought to improve Chinese society and its self-image by preserving traditional Chinese values, yet adopting ideas and technology from the West. You know, that tracks. I mean, I, I think most versions, had, at least on some level, acknowledge the fact that you know a large part of tai chi's success was in its ability to be a health practice right the fact that anybody could do it pre pretty much and could get benefit from it um was a pretty uh appealing thing especially in times when healthcare was at a minimum you know right taking things you get if you could if you don't have access to a you know, body worker or a doctor or whatever, you know, some of these things can be useful at times. So I think it was just, you know, giving people a little bit more. And that's still, I think, why Tai Chi is popular is that, you know, it does give you this sort of um, two for one aspect of it, right? That, you know, it, it is a martial art. It's a very effective yeah. martial art, but it's also a very effective health practice. And, and, you know, just the doing something that, you only got to do it for maybe 20 minutes to an hour a day. And it gives you these pretty substantial benefits as far as just physical health. You know, that's, that's pretty appealing to most people. Right. You know, it's not a magic pill, you know, by any stretch, but like, yeah. It just occurred to me that Barbara's note mentioning that Yang Lu Chan, Yang the Invincible, who's known to be a badass, he already started talking about applying it to average people and using it to make your life better above and beyond the martial arts from the start, which is interesting. Usually people attribute it that to his grandson, Yang Cheng Fu. Um, but yeah, so it's been a part yeah. of Tai Chi since day one, which is cool. Mm -hmm. So here's, okay, so the whole point of Yang Lu Chan's student, Wu, is that, so later in life, Wu is heading to his brother's graduation ceremony. Um, Wu Yuxiang went to visit his brother in Wuyang. He intended to stop en route at the Chen family village, and give his regards to Yang Luchan's teacher, Chen Chen Xing. And uh, so that's interesting because that's the idea of the student going to visit his grand teacher, which is a big thing in Chinese martial arts. Anytime right. you can find your teacher's teacher or or your teacher's teacher's classmates, you always, you know, make sure you can find them if you can and learn anything you can, which is something we've tried to do as well. So he's headed to Chen Village to kind of get the inside scoop. Yeah, so I well, I, mean, I, I think that's that's a um, very common theme in martial arts is, you know, you, if you can uh, sort of, to use the modern term, level up a bit by, mm -hmm. <clears throat> by going to your teacher's teacher, mm -hmm. it, it gives you uh, a chance to progress, you know, beyond what your classmates might. Right. Give you a little edge there. Elevate you to a higher level. Maybe not so, all the way. Maybe not all the way to the level of your teacher, but it 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 gets you like a, you know, a point five or whatever. <laughs> totally, totally. And it's fun to see someone who sees your teacher as their student, kind of. So you, it's like your grandparents compared to your parents. Your grandparents will sometimes give you a little bo extra bonus, or like give you candy when your parents won't, or you know what I mean. Like, you sure. if you're lucky, this grand teacher might. Yeah, just expose some things that your teacher wouldn't wouldn't bother. Yeah, I mean it's it's the value of uh, training with someone who's done it longer. I mean that right. that there is a real um, 
you know, there's a value in getting with a younger teacher who's got the the desire to teach more. That's really valuable. And then yeah, there's also a, that. there's also a value in, you know, someone who's just been doing it for 50 to 60 to 70 right. years is just going to have insights to things that you don't have because it's just been doing They've been doing it so oh. long. It's just, you know, matured in a way. So that's his idea is to get to Chen Village. However, Wu Yusheng was passing through nearby Zaobao Village. He was convinced by an innkeeper to instead stay in Zaobao and study with one of the Chen relatives there. Hmm. So he never even made it to Chen Village. Right. But so he did you, train with the Chen master. You found someone along the way who was. So that's how Zaobao Village jumps into the picture. And they sometimes are said to be, you know, the real Taiji comes from there or whatever. Um, so Yu Xiang stayed one month during which he received the essence of the Chen teachings. And then he went on the rest of the way in his journey. So when he got there, meanwhile, someone found a manuscript about boxing in a salt shop in Wuyang. The owner of the shop knew of the Wu brothers' interest in martial arts, so he so showed uh, Wu Yuxiang's brother the manuscript, who then gave it to Yuxiang when he arrived. Uh, and then they both thought this manuscript is great, and so Wu Yuxiang brought the manuscript back to back to his hometown and showed it to his teacher and friend Yang Luchan. Yang declared its importance and thus began the journey of the classics. Right. Yeah. So I it's think... not even written by a Tai Chi master. It's it's some separate document that they kind of adopted. Or at least that's the theory here. Right. I mean, um, I think it's similar to you know the the way Bagua Zhang is connected to the I Ching, for example, mm. or mm -hmm. you, know, you can you you can go either way, right? Like you can say that. A thing existed, and then they used the book to sort of go here. See, this is an example of it. Or you can go the other way and say, well, the writing existed first, and then they built the thing around the, the principles. I mean, this is something we'll never know. Right. Especially with Tai Chi, I mean, because there is sort of a branding thing going on, too. Like, right? when do people decide that what they're doing is different from what other people who do it right so right. i mean um that it's very likely that if you asked uh you know people before say yang cheng fu right hmm. what they did they would just give you their the family name right okay the particular art for you know if it was a family art Right, like that's the Chen what, family art. Right. So that was one of that's one of the unique things about Bagua Zhang is it doesn't have a really a family connection, right? Hmm. It has a community. I mean, he's a eunuch, it's not much of a family. Right, right, right. He doesn't have sons and he doesn't have so so it's like it's a community thing, not a hereditary thing, right? Where hmm. Tai Chi is is pretty much from bo both the Chen and the Yang, and then later the Wu. Or, or woos is you have these different lineages right you have that they they sort of turn into their own style at some point but i think usually that's probably more the students of the person doing it not the person yeah the same, the same way you know uh sort of in the modern age people that practice uh some people that practice uh chim and ching style have come to call it cheng style because it is different from what you know the standard yang form is right so right for better or worse yeah it's it, it's, it, its own it's thing a, now it's a derivative if you will right it, like it, it it comes from that source but he did his own thing with it and so again you can say it's a variation but after a while it's like variations become their own thing and then you know it's just that's how all things work right I mean, pretty much um so next let's get back to uncovering the secrets of internal power in tai chi by bai hua so we've been reading from the tai chi chuan jing the uh, tai chi chuan classic and we've reached the next section it says the root lies in the feet which originates in the legs dominates at the waist and manifests in the fingers this is a tai chi statement that is every school i've ever been to is that brings out i mean this one's like a tai chi ABC, right? Like this is this is one of the key formulas. 
it gets usually sometimes phrased as like a military analogy that like the legs are the mm, top, you know the, they're the commanders commander, or whatever maybe. yeah the legs or the waist are is sort of the field commander and then the hands are the uh the soldiers right that, that it has this sort of hierarchical thing of you know the power comes from the legs um the uh direction comes from the waist mm. and then, then the expression comes from the hands right so the 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 phrase that all things in tai chi come from the lower from the waist right this is mm. part of that idea that you know it starts in your legs but but the the way he says dominates right that the, the waist is the primary thing and then it finally just kind of forms out in the fingertips right so in one sense all internal martial arts do that same sort of sequence it's just that last one is different right so how you manifest it is different but it's hmm. still it still has to get from your you know your your internal connection because that's what root is right it, it is starts to ha- you know has to start in your feet and be able to connect to your arms and right. somewhere and somewhere in there is your spine and you know right this is a basic i mean i'd say all chinese martial arts seek to achieve this internal martial arts always usually use it in the same formula but Everybody wants to get that leg power into the punches. Every martial art, that's hopefully you're getting your whole body behind your strikes, you know. Yeah, but not every martial art says that. Right. So it's it's sort of. This is a very Tai Chi way of approaching it. it. Because a lot of martial arts focus on the hands. You know, they focus mm. on, on the, the shape of the fist and the arm. That's true. So I think it's it's saying that, the, again, you know, the the that's part of it but that the the dominant thing is the waist right that that's the most important part the waist dominates and control that's the waist movement is so emphasized in tai chi right that's kind of where it's going right so then uh bai hua decides to give his two cents here so so bai hua begins with this first statement here to unpack this uh idea that the root is in the feet So he says, according to the rule that yin dominates, if man is compared with the earth, then man belongs to yang and the earth belongs to yin. So the earth dominates man. So he seems to be comparing this to the previous Lao Tzu quote about how the function of yin and yang in the universe. Yeah, in real short terms, um, you know, heaven, uh, man earth right so what he's saying is that there's a there's a relative relationship happening right so when you compare heaven and earth earth is the yin one right because it's the smaller but when you compare man and earth man is the smaller so we're the yin right uh on top of the yin essentially hmm. so it, we're, we're we function the way earth does which is just a way of saying it's um matter is expanding and and it destroys itself essentially right that, hmm. that decay so decay yeah that, that this this way of energy happening is where things decay as opposed to the type of energy that brings things together and forms life Right, those are two the two forces the creative and the destructive cycles. Right, just getting into like Chinese medicine theory and stuff. But you, know, you have these two cycles of, of of the five elements, and one creates life and one rips it apart. And so, the one that creates that cycle that destroy that ultimately destroys something, where the the mass, the physical mass, is getting is no longer you know can hold the energy right so entropy is the word we use and entropy therefore yeah that's what i'm saying so so he's saying that when you apply entropy to you know us to man to human beings it it is this this property of decay that we aren't going to last forever right yeah 
No, so, Bottom okay. line. <laughs> That's the short version. There you go. Right, short version. Okay. <laughs> so he continues from there. Therefore, people need to utilize the Earth's gravitational force as the basic activity. That is, connect coordination of your joints to the Earth. Normally, people only have their feet on the ground. So the root of human strength lies in the feet. So he makes the whole point about yin and yang and earth and man just to say that if we want to take advantage of the proper cycle of things, we need to link ourselves to the earth and use the earth's gravitational force. Yeah, that, I, I mean, effectively, he's saying that um, gravity is the main mm. thing that you're going to use, right? And mm. it's and and the, the 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 practice is essentially the manipulation of gravity, right? That you slightly alter the way you do things so that your gravity is not a uh, opposing force to what you're doing it, it, it helps you do something right this is the idea of the down causing the up mm. right? that, that if you're going to do any kind of movement where your hands or your body go up there's going to be something inside of you that drops right so the very first movement of tai chi is essentially this principle, right? You sink your body so that your arms come up, a.k.a. plunge. Right. And he says you normally only have your feet on the ground. So if you had your hands on the ground, you'd have to do it reverse kind of. Right. I mean, he's saying basically you're not doing a handstand. So, right. you know, you could do it effectively if you are if you were flipped upside down, but we aren't. So, you know, you got to do it through your feet. So he extrapolates further and says that since the balance of the body lies in the in the waist, the dantian, it must through the le- must be through the legs and dominated and reorganized by the waist. And then joints are coordinated from the inside to the ending of the body, the fingers and toes, including the head, the top of the head. Um, okay, so that makes sense. So you link to the earth, and then the the dantian, the center of your body coordinates and dominates and controls the action of the body and whipping out of the body segments yes basically it's, and it's... he includes the head and you can attack with the fingers the toes and the head <laughs> right so the you know the point being by you're just kind of accessing the earth is the way the way this seems to me like this is yeah, how you i mean the earth. again it's this power. is it's a very like lofty way of saying you have to have your body lined up with gravity Right. That the, the the main principle of Tai Chi is to physically align yourself so that the force of gravity can be used in this particular way. Because that's all we are, right? I mean, that the uh, one of the things that Bruce talks about that I, I've always found interesting is you know, this stuff doesn't work if you're in space. Mm. Right. If you're floating, right. It doesn't well, it doesn't work the same way. I mean, sure. You, things will will change right so it's like imagine you know if you were on a world where gravity was flipped upside down you know when we walked around on our heads then you wouldn't have to do this is kind of what he's saying that that because of the way we're structured and the way gravity is structured you have to align yourself right Right. this is the formula to follow in this condition because of this process, we are normally being squished and mm. sort of, you know, that, that our, ma- our mass is being <clears throat> overtaken by energy around us, essentially. And, and so that part of what we have to do is we have to physically use our bodies to uh, move with gravity. And then that creates this, you know, health, as he puts it, right, that this... Um, uh lightness right you know this this that you have to like go from being this heavy thing that's just sort of down all the time to to take that and circulate it back up so that you're light and agile Mm -hmm. yeah that emphasis on lightness that he spoke of earlier good talking to you let's keep the conversation going all right man take care Hey, folks, hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, check out the Instagram and Patreon. Uh, we have a Facebook page, all that stuff. Uh, hope you enjoy the episode. Thanks for all your support and take care of yourselves.